Welcome to number nine. This is the Tipping Forties podcast, and uh, I'm Ryan. I'm Benson. I'm Alex. And I'm Michael. We got a good show for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about the Netflix movie of the month, uh, My Magic Dog. It's going to be great. Benson's going to teach us about Ohio Valley wrestling, um, and Mike is going to teach us about the Bill of Rights, or not yeah. the Bill of Rights, but how the they apply. Rights, how yeah. they apply today. Yeah. Um, and of course, we have uh, the top three movies and the top five most wanted. Cool. Um, once again, if you'd like to leave us a voicemail, it's 218-666-8407 or podcast at tipping40.com. Did you say voicemail? Yes, we have some voicemails for us. For you. For, for everyone. One sec, it's got to pull up here. Hey, you fucks. I may be late, but I don't fucking care. I was busy getting late. Either way, y'all are welcome for the voicemail. Fuck you, Benson. <laughs> uh, the reason I was actually Fair fucking point. calling y'all about that is not because I want to fucking protect Viacom. Fuck Viacom. I agree. The reason was because apparently agree. some image yeah. banks or whatever the fuck they are were cracking down on some blogs using images that were copyrighted, shutting those blogs down. I actually like your fucking podcast. I didn't want y'all to be shut down. So don't give me any staff. Fuck you, Benson. <laughs> uh... Fuck, what else do you fuck talk about? Oh, so uh, yeah. we're going to stop it there. We're going to stop it there for time constraint. Uh, oh, fuck you, Benson. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I hear that so often that it almost loses meaning. But, no, we appreciate you responding. And, uh, you know, we were making fun, but I totally understand. Like, yeah. you're trying to help. And uh, it was a good idea to put those up anyway. I'm just being a dick. I, I love I love though that he's always going to be known as Train Guy, though. Yeah, yeah well, or Willie next to the next guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got we got one more um, because that pod or that uh, that message there may be deemed somewhat irrelevant after uh, something else is that's going on, which we we'll can discuss. Hey guys, uh, this is more of a request really than a comment about the podcast or anything. But I was wondering if you guys could talk about. Um, that S.978 bill that they're talking about passing um, has to do with people not being able to talk over gameplay or show gameplay uh, videos anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another train. What the fuck? Okay, first off, yes, I'll actually next week I'll look into the Protect IP Act, which yeah. you're talking about, which is actually interesting. Topic. Yeah, we were talking about this yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah, obviously we try to separate the Let's Plays from the podcast, but in this case it's relevant for us as a group because... Yeah. And potential felons. Yeah, yeah <laughs> essentially, yeah. I mean, that that's a big so, yeah, deal so for us. That's so. actually an interesting topic, and I'll uh, probably do a report on it next week. Yeah. But uh, like the second that. thing I have to comment is, what's with all the trains? Yeah. yeah. It's like actually, a train when, conspiracy or Honestly, something. when you said that the last person would be deemed irrelevant, I thought him being called train guy would be the irrelevant <laughs> part. Now yeah. he's, he's the new train guy. I think maybe that all of our viewers are hobos. Or maybe yeah. everyone <laughs> that's concerned about copyrights live underneath train tracks. That so, could be true. Well, we, we do put our ads in uh, train stations when people are waiting around. Yeah, right. the, uh, stops, Valley so. Metro, we have a bunch like, of oh, I gotta watch yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have so many viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that, thanks for the uh, voicemails. Keep them coming. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll try to discuss the IP thing uh, in more detail in I'll the near future. Research. So, um, Moving on, we got beer of the week. Uh, I get to do it again because I'm hosting again. This is my uh, probably my favorite beer on earth. It's Horse and Dunk Abbey Brown Ale. It's uh, pretty good. It's just, <laughs> pretty good. He likes it so much well, he's really reading the labels. Well, still. according to the, the, back of the, the back of the label is way more elegant than I could ever say. A dark, robust Abbey Ale brewed by master craftsmen in the classic Belgian double style. Rich and malty with notes of port, raisins, and black chocolate on the palate, and a yeasty, fruity, slightly smoky bouquet. My love so where's it from? That would be bouquet. Bouquet. Yeah. It's Bouquets. imported from Belgium. Belgium, yes. <laughs> you know, Give me some of those Listen, fancy you know, ass chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Croquettes. <laughs> no, so, I, yeah, that that's beer, a good is, beer It's pretty amazing. It's, it's pretty expensive. If I, if I had to be on a desert island for the rest of my life drinking one beer, it would be this. So, uh, I think it's too hot for Corson and Doc on an island. But. It's it's his favorite, and I would say I would put it pretty high up on it's, my list, it's too. It's definitely beer. not my favorite, well, of course, but I, I like it a lot. It's expensive, but it's from Belgium, so yeah. go figure. Yeah, it's fantastic. Have you had it on tap? No, I have not. I have one time. It I was, bet that was wonderful. It was insanely good, oh, yeah. I thought I knew some place that has it. 
Yeah, I don't remember Pop-Go, where it was. Yeah, it was. Actually, yeah, you're right. If it's at Papago, I yeah, they do have it there. Yeah, yeah, I've had it on tap once. Shouts to Papago Brewing Company. Yeah, if you live in Phoenix, uh, check week. out Papago Brewing. It's a great place Something's to. Something's got sale. Great place to drink. Food's not bad too, but the the beers. It's all about the beer yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, good beer of the week. Moving on to Netflix movie of the month. Yes. Um, last week we uh, asked, well, not asked, but said we were going to watch a great movie called My Magic Dog. And we hoped that you viewed it along with us. And um, I, Alex is going to share his thought because he, uh, he loves watching bad movies. Well, yeah, we so uh, we generally like to, you know, pick children's movies because they're usually really bad and the acting is always terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. if they involve animals, which uh, this one has a magic dog. i got to say, not to interrupt, uh, out of all the movies that we've recommended so far, I've been pretty ashamed of the choices because yeah. they've just been bad. But this one, this one was good. This, this one, one was funny. fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was so Excellent. funny. So funny. Well, we, we should, first off, correct ourselves. When we were recommending it last week, we thought this movie was very British based on the phrasing. <laughs> yeah, I was very confused when I started yeah. watching. I was like... What? It's not British at all. This is like yeah. Southern California. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, so uh, the movie starts out with some kid walking around with full house font on everything. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, was house. my first note, too. Yeah. I have, we both have font. notes. Yeah. <laughs> so then... Uh, the second thing I wrote down is kid sucks at acting. I write this down on every single thing I ever watch. Kid sucks at acting. And then, the dude, this, the kids in this movie, the girl, the little girl is one of the worst <laughs> kid actors yet. The, the little girl was, that, that kid was not good, but that little girl might be one of the worst child actors I've ever seen in my life. So, like, kind of the plot of this movie is uh, the kid lives with his stepdad because his mom died, so he's almost with his stepdad now, but the... The aunt, who is the sister oh, we of the, say, the mom. Off, we should say that the kid loves his stepdad. He actually likes yeah, his stepdad. Yeah, he loves his yeah, stepdad. The stepdad is good. The mom's dead, but the aunt of the actual son wants to get custody of him because the son's grandpa is super rich or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's like the last male yeah, heir. Yeah, he wants the heir of it. So she wants to get get the kid back, and the kid also has a dog that he loves. That's that's the story. The dog's name is Lucky. Yeah, the so then the movie starts out with the kid walking around yeah. and shit, and then um, Corilla DeVille shows up, who is the aunt, and she yeah. just spouts exposition she nonstop. She the worst actor. Yeah, it's the, they, first, the first thing she terrible. ever shows up in, the first words out of her mouth are exposition. Yeah. Yeah, the little right girl and the, and the oldest woman in the movie are the two that really... Uh, <laughs> Shine. Yeah. So we learned that women can't act. Apparently. <laughs> the other movie. woman isn't great, but she's whatever. She's not yeah. like those she's, two. She's lame. Yeah. Also, the kids in this neighborhood, they uh, don't use normal swings. They use baby swings to swing on. Yeah, there's a kid in a baby no, swing. Kid on small swing. The baby swing gang? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the swing had leg holes, but instead his butt was just sunk into it because he couldn't fit. It's fantastic. Yeah, and then, uh, okay, so the, so the dad, he's kind of lonely, you know, because he doesn't have a mom. Or he doesn't have a wife. Kid doesn't yeah. have a mom. Uh-huh. So there's, there's, a new, there's a new neighbor that moves in next door. Ooh, and then he catches her trash picking through his garbage. <laughs> yeah. And she goes... And he's like, I don't have a babysitter. You want to babysit my kid? You're just trash What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that when I uh, when I need a babysitter, I would choose the first person I see picking through my garbage because those they seem trustworthy. Now, now the weird thing about this movie is that the kid wants the stepfather to get with this girl. And we have a sound clip for that. We the do. first sound clip. Don't you think she's a little old for you? Yeah, but not for my dad. Ooh. Uh, see, so apparently, according to Mike, that is the weird thing about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> the, kid, the kid pimps for his dad. Yeah, yeah I, I wrote, like, kid is a pimp. Right off the bat. So, <laughs> But, you know, I got to say, that's that's weird in terms of reality, but in terms of movies, it's not that weird. It happens no, a lot. Um, it takes two. So um, the next one, the next thing I know is, I'm going <laughs> to let Mike talk about this one, what the kid always eats. Okay, so we took a, we took a count. Um... This kid is malnourished. And it's funny because they want to take the kid away. Mom. Yeah, they want to take the kid away. And, you know, there's kind of a good case because in throughout the movie, he eats pizza three times. Yeah. All other types of food he eats. Dude, his two first other three times. meals are pizza, yeah. too. So yeah. Three out of five. Three. So there's a comeback at the end, but it still doesn't beat pizza. So this kid <laughs> mo- mostly eats pizza. The, the best, the best thing is it shows him eating pizza for lunch, then pizza for dinner, then pizza in the morning the next day. So that's three reels in a. Three meals in a row. <laughs> you say he eats pizza in the morning. And pizza in the evening. And pizza at supper Also, time. he says yeah. pizza, pizza, which is a little Caesar's ad. He does, yeah. He yeah. Does. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... Oh, that was a bad line delivery. The dad also just gives him free reign because he always sends him to the pizza shop with money. It's like, just buy whatever. And he's yeah, a kid. a lot for that location. So he's going to... Oh, yeah. Well, they used it plenty, so... I'm sure they got their money's Also, worth. this movie's like, just after like 20 minutes in, you know how fucking cliche it is. You know? Oh, yeah. Kid has stepdad or doesn't have anyone to get with. Then he has like 
a, a friend next door that has a walkie-talkie, he talks to her at night and shit like oh, that. God, the dad remember. doesn't keep his promises. This, the, the son's all sad about that. It's so fucking cliche. Instead of a walkie-talkie, they should have had a kid. Okay, so, exactly so far we have not gotten to the dog who plays on oh, yeah, this part of the yeah. So, um, yeah. the house gets robbed by these... Ni- okay, let me go back. So the, so the Aunt Violet, who is the aunt, she, he, she wants the will to steal from the stepdad who says that, you know, the son goes to the stepdad yeah. or like that. So she... She hires some neighborhood hooligans to go and, uh, who beat up the kid regularly, to go in, into his house and steal the will. And when they're running away, the dog's chasing him, and the dog gets run over and dies. Not to um, mention those kids, those hooligans, uh, their favorite hobby is sitting on the jungle gym at the park <laughs> waiting for people to beat up. They don't actually do anything. They just sit there all day. So, so yeah, the, the dog dies, and, uh, the kid's really sad, and, uh... He's sitting in his room. And then he prays to the dog. He so he, he prays to the dog. And he's like, Ann, I wish you could help me. And the dog comes down as a as a ghost. And, the, and a sweet video toaster effect. Yeah, it, like in a sparkler. It's it kind of like, like the more you know. Yeah, yeah it looks like the <laughs> yeah. more you know. Yeah, 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 it does. So then yeah. the dog comes down. Like We're like, please talk, please talk. And then he says something. We have our second sound clip. Hey, you can help me find the file box. You said it, Sparky. It's payback time. <laughs> I don't know, Rocky. That's his I voice. I could probably help you with I thought it actually sounded more like Yogi Bear. But yeah. Yeah, he does sound. Get that. Hey, boo-boo. Yeah. Because so the dog can talk, and only the kid can see the dog, of course. No one else can see the dog. But the dog can pick things up and whatnot. So a quick explanation. The reason why it's called Magic Dog is not because the dog's magic, because he's a ghost. That's bullshit. The, well. The, the kid does magic in the beginning of the movie. That's the yeah. only reason why... There's any magic involved. In well, you dog. know what the original uh, title was? Yeah, you, you, my you, ghost dog. See, actually. that makes way more sense. And it's uh, it's listed as my ghost dog on AM, IMDb. I'm thinking that maybe they changed the title for the DVD or something. Oh, we've got to mention something else. The kid wants to be a magician, but he's terrible. So then, yes. when the dog is a go- he only the kid can see the dog. Yeah. yeah. So the dog, like you know, carries a ball in his mouth. Everyone sees a floating ball. So he's like, oh, look at my magic. Whoa. So now he's a real magician. Ghost dog. Then also, uh, I want to mention something else that I noticed. Um, the uh, aunt comes over with her lawyer, you know, just as like, hey, it's about some bullshit. Yeah, about the it. lawyer is a guy from the state that's trying and to And then um, I noticed that if you've ever seen this movie called Space Mutiny, the popular has mystery a, science the best mystery theater 3000, theater. probably yes. the funniest one. And it has the bad guy's name is Calgon, that is also the actor of the lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Calgon's in this and he blew me away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say uh, Alex was the one who noticed that. That was a great spot, And by the way. I wouldn't have noticed it at all, but the second we realized it was him, I, I was extremely elated. So, yeah. We also started making mystery science theater jokes the entire time. <laughs> yeah, well. So then the kid goes back to the park to meet up with those hooligans to beat him up again, but this time he has his ghost dog with him. Yeah. And we have a sound file of those hooligans, so go ahead and play. So why are you walking around here talking to your dead dog? If you're gonna talk to something dead, at least talk to Abraham Lincoln. I'm not oh, sure what that is. This guy's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's really funny. So then after that, you know, they, they're shitting on for talking to his ghost dog. And oh, that was a terrible joke. But then, I, <laughs> then, the, then the dog puts a ball in his mouth and he runs around scaring people. But then they do a ball cam where yeah. the camera is yeah. right behind the dog nose yeah. with the ball in his mouth for like literally a minute and a half. Yeah, <laughs> it goes for a long time. It's a really bad. And then there's a there's there's a uh, cock joke. Yeah, cock there's joke. a cock that's what I wrote down. Cock joke. Okay. Yes, there it is. We love cock jokes. Um, <laughs> so then um, after that, the. Uh, the little girl who's the friend of the son, they try to get the two, the mom and the, the neighbor, neighbor and the dad <laughs> together. And they write a letter for each one, like a fake letter, and put them in each other's mailboxes to meet up for lunch. Like, you know, they oh, for each other. That's so original. Something kids really do, you know? Yeah. And, um, they, <laughs> do some sweet, they do some sweet voiceovers of the, of the parents reading these. Oh, I yeah. Mean, a sound clip of this. Dear it's Chester, hi, yo, Phoebe. It would be the fulfillment of my innermost <laughs> desire. Want to grab some lunch with me this afternoon? If you would luncheon with me this afternoon, Chet, Evie. So she's British. <laughs> He's just normal. Like, Want to get some lunch with one. me? <laughs> would you like to luncheon with me? If it wasn't in a British accent, he would have picked it up when she, she when she was reading in her head. He'd be like, "This is obviously not Phoebe," because this, these words on this paper aren't British. I can't hear the British. Yeah. Thing. So so then uh so then the, the the neighbor and the dad go to lunch 
at the pizza place, of course. Hey, they bought that location. And um, <laughs> they're like having a, they're not having a good date. They aren't talking. They don't know what to do. So the kid asks the dog something. We have a sound clip for this. Oh God. <laughs> Give me some ideas. Hey, don't look at me. I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, you <laughs> you may be hearing that clip in the future because we're going to be using okay, that. Okay, the dog, dog gives legal <laughs> advice and other shit in this movie. Yeah, the dog does <laughs> give... Okay, yeah, that's later on. Later on, the cops show up and they ask him questions and the dog gives him legal advice. Like, don't answer any questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's a lawyer or something. No, it's the... It's the fit. <laughs> dog... What, what would it be? Dog Esquire. Dog. <laughs> no, it's the it's the perfect excuse though because every time he knows what to do, he can say do this. But then when he doesn't know, he can just be like, "Don't look at me. I'm a dog." He completely <laughs> invalidates all future opinions and past opinions that he's had. Though. <laughs> he's oh, that doesn't matter. My species is too dumb to answer your questions. Okay. Not smart enough to talk. Once yeah. this date starts, though, the movie completely forgets about the ant for like. 45 minutes. Yeah. It just goes away. All, she shows up a love story. Yeah, she shows up as a yeah. plot device in like the last 10 minutes. Yeah, for the next 45 minutes, it's all about the love story. That's so the problem with this movie is it doesn't know what it's trying to be exactly um, toward the end because you can't tell whether it's about the kid trying to get his parents together or, well, the two yeah. people together mm-hmm. or if it's them trying to get the aunt out of the picture is trying to like scam them and you don't know which. So. so the rest of the movie, like the dog and the son are trying to find the file box to get the wheel back. And the dog, apparently he could just teleport anywhere he wants. He just goes, oh, what's up? I'm over here now. I'll be right back in Tuesday. He just teleports. Well, he only teleports when it's uh, cohesive to the plot, though. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, sometimes he, he can't. Sometimes he can't teleport, and like he has they, to run. They, like, there was that one time he's like, hey, can you go through this wall? And he's like, no. But I can teleport. <laughs> but he can teleport. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fucking that happens rules. That happens a lot. So the movie concludes with, um, no, no, no. no there's a, there's a, you're forgetting about another part. The part when um, they have a real date at the neighbor's house. Oh, or actually, at the, at the dad's house. That's That part is And, um, you know, the dad doesn't know what to say. He's, like, not good at dates and like that. So he, his son offers to give him advice with, like, an uh, earpiece. Yeah, like an IFD in yeah, his he, ear. And while he's at the date, he just has a big old earpiece. And he's like, what the fuck? What's going on? Are you with Secret Service or something? What's going on? <laughs> and then um, the dad's on the... It's like a radio one or something like that. And he's picking up police signal calls. So we just, he's Ron Burgundy just spouting out whatever the cops say in the middle of the date. Yeah. Then he puts it off as like a cool poem and she Freelance falls for it. Yeah, it's like. Oh it, it makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Which is why it's fantastic. Yep. Are we done? <laughs> uh, no, we haven't talked about Cal. No, no, no. And then um, after the, you know, the, the, they, like, they like each other after that. And then um, the aunt comes back. And um, the aunt also has a little dog. Yeah. <laughs> carries and it wears a goat. And then um, there's something I can't remember what was wrong with the plot. Something was going on where they, they couldn't find the file box. Yeah, they didn't know what the file box was. Yeah, and the, the little dog. dog goes, "Oh, it's underground over here!" And then yeah, they don't like, like, find it right there. It just fixes yeah, the plot completely. I hate the owner. <laughs> yeah, I know. The dog, Deus ex the, machina. The magic dog goes out and grabs. The that would be dog ex machina. <laughs> so then the movie ends with the cop showing up because um, they're going to take away the aunt's going to take away the kid because she came up with a fake will. Yeah. She showed it to the cop, but the dad is like blocking guess, the car. Yeah, I guess court cases don't exist. Yeah. yeah. Well, Calgon was there and he looked at the will and he, he said thought it, was that it was real. A bad will. Yeah, because that's how courts work. Yeah. Well, Calgon blew me away. Yep. And then the, this, yep, the, the dog's name was Lucky. Mm-hmm. You know, the dog, after he helps the son, he's like, oh, I can't help you anymore. I've done my job. So he leaves. But then the, the dad and the neighbor get together and then they buy the son a new dog. And the new dog's name is Luckier. Uh. Now, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, so is he going to get hit by two cars or what? Make a, uh, <laughs> or if you if you feel like it, make an effort to listen to the show This American Life and uh, the one about the bull named Chance. And when they bull died, they got it cloned and they had a second bull named Second Chance. <laughs> and it's basically the same thing as that. Oh, Except great. This American Life oh. is actually good and that movie is uh, awful. That I forgot, is true. I forgot, <laughs> to add, I forgot to add something. Um... The cop was currently looking for um, Corella Deville lady oh, yeah. be- because um, she she found out that she was the one who hired the hooligans to rob the house, yeah. and she, he was helping her the whole time because she had the fake will. Then after the will was fake, he's like, "Oh, what's your name again? Oh, I'm gonna arrest you for robbing this house." Yeah, so they're gonna yeah. Ask yeah. Him, the whole thing. without asking yeah. what her name is. He was going to help escort this kid out of the home, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, wait, you're a wanted like can, yeah, you're like." I don't. I don't think yeah, we mentioned also that the cop looks strikingly like Dokes, Dokes. from the show De- Dexter. I, I see you. He looked a lot like Dokes. So, oh I my really, god! 
<laughs> that movie. So yeah, watch it with your friends. Drink. Oh. Watch it by yourself. <laughs> you may need to. Ball can. Okay, moving on. Uh, Benson's going to teach us about Ohio Valley wrestling. Yeah. I'm learning. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm going to teach you anything. but uh, <laughs> So, Ohio Valley wrestling is basically a cheap version of, uh, you know, WWE or WWF or whatever the hell they're calling it right now. And it's... It's uh, based in Louisville, Kentucky, which is actually what? where the Ohio Valley is. Yeah. It's not actually in Ohio. The Ohio Valley is an area of Kentucky, which I didn't know um, and still don't need to know, but <laughs> now I do because of this. Uh, it's run by a guy named Danny Davis, who's basically the Vince McMahon of Ohio Valley wrestling. So <laughs> that's like saying he's the Pablo Escobar of like... 4th Street in, in yeah. Phoenix selling drugs. Yeah, like, <laughs> basically. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not yeah. much. Um, but I will say one thing. Uh, they have m- many, if not all, of their TV. They, they have live TV aired episodes that are... Uh, that Well, I don't know if they're live, actually. They're not, actually, now that I think about it. But they are aired That's on TV. Insane. But they're in Louisville. Like, right, they're, like, right. local television. But they are aired on TV. Um, so and their their theme song for their opening theme song is Bodies by Drowning Pool. Oh, oh my god. Something if you don't know that song, I, I, I didn't get a clip of it because I don't want to play that in the <laughs> podcast. But we can just sing um it. yeah, I can. It's the song that goes, Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> you may remember that song. Um really there's not much to say about Ohio Valley wrestling because it's stupid and uh <laughs> That's just There's, like that's, your opinion. Man. Yeah, it really. Well, it is. But I did. I did watch a large portion of an episode of it too, <laughs> in order to understand what it was exactly. Um, let me tell you something. You know, how, like you watch WWE or well, something. Like, well, you've seen it before. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's seen it. Yeah. And you know, the fans are into it. Like yeah. they, they, they love it. It's like soap opera for men. They fucking love that shit. Ohio Valley Wrestling. Everyone looked like they had just taken a bunch of Valium. Like, oh, they so were they just were... sitting in their seats, and they were all fat. So they, super fat. So they were on the Adam Carolla show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like that. They, some of them cheered, but uh, when the guy was, like, trying to get them to cheer, he's like, yeah, let's hear it for blah, and then they would cheer. But other than that, everyone just sat there with their arms just hanging well, limp off their chairs. Well, they're in Kentucky, I mean. Well, yeah, like I'm saying, like, it was... It, the, the, Why would the they average, pay to go there? I don't know. I don't Five understand bucks. it. It was probably super cheap, yeah. Um, but uh, they were. It, it was made in like, I think like '87, and it's basically now nowadays what it what it serves as is that people use it as like a stepping stone to right, get to the right. WWE. It's like minor and leagues. yeah, and a lot of people have actually gone to the WWE and been successful uh, wrestlers in that, like in terms of you know drawing crowds and stuff. Um, coming from Ohio Valley Wrestling. So they're considered actually fairly, like, valid as far as, like, an entertainment, you know, stepping stone. Are they still in business? Yes, they are. They they have been for, right, straight up from, let's see, I think it was, let's see, it was, oh, sorry, it was 1997. They were in the National Wrestling Alliance for a while, and they went out of that after a while. But I don't know, like... They've been around for quite a while, and they, they're still successful in some way. I mean, locally in Kentucky, especially, but they do have wrestlers that are nationwide. Um, so, off that boring shit, let's just talk about the wrestlers because those are the only yeah. things that are yeah. kind of funny. Um, I got to say, the wrestlers they have are most of them are boring. Like they're like just normal looking people, big beefy dudes. Um, and yeah, but there are some exceptions that are pretty great because they're like. They're seriously just like low budget versions of yeah. like famous wrestlers. Like, they're, yeah. but they're not like copies of them. They have their own theme, but they're always like a really Roy bad Mysterio. theme. Um, for example, <laughs> one of them is called the wrestler's called Rudy Switchblade. Yeah, <laughs> and great. he looks exactly like a generic bad guy from Final Fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he dresses. Like, if you look him up, he is Make clothes. Sure he pick up that turkey. He looks great. He's funny. He's funny. Um, there's also a guy named Trailer Park Trash, um, and his uh, hometown like on the website. It says he's 
he looks like just stupid. He doesn't even look like trailer trash really, but his hometown's great because his hometown says everywhere because his home is mobile. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere in Kentucky anyway. And there's uh there's a couple of uh British girls named Hannah and Holly Blossom. They're twins and they're like a tag team. And by the way, it says on the website they won the OVW Women's Championship in their first televised match, which is like saying like, the Dodgers won the World Series in their first yeah, game. Like, how is that valid then? How did they win it? How did they get into the championship without playing in the minor leagues at all? I don't understand. Because they came into the ring with a chair, and the opponent didn't see it coming, and the ref wasn't looking. Yeah, well, my personal favorite, um, and the last one I'll mention, is Mo Green. And he is a, he's dressed like a pimp. And his, his signature moves are the pimp slap and... The best move is uh, the stanky leg. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the stanky leg entail? I haven't seen it, and I <laughs> never will. So probably something great. But uh, <laughs> So anyway, I don't really care about Ohio Valley Wrestling, and so I'm not going to really go into much more detail than that. But basically, if you want to be a professional wrestler for some reason... Move to uh, Kentucky. Yeah, apparently go to Louisville, Kentucky, because your chances will go up a lot of uh, getting into yeah, some those form of wrestling. Overweight spectators. They do have a lot of people. Um, actually, you might recognize the name Jim Cornette. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, I think so. He's actually a promoter. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the match like promoters of Ohio Valley Wrestling. So he's like one of the top two people in the right. group or whatever. And he was actually a successful like WWF. Uh, like promoter and stuff for a long time and then i think he got kicked out for slapping someone he got mad and he slapped someone and he got kicked out of wwf so that's kind of funny he probably had roid rage questions okay so i got one here from mick he says roughly how many episodes of ohio valley wrestling tv have we made have they made um on the okay well on the website it says something like 619 or something which but the thing is though too i don't know if that's how many there are it could also be like maybe there's six six season 19th episode or right, something right, i right. don't know how many there are mm-hmm. but they have a, a lot there's a lot of mm-hmm. stuff on there if you go to their website it's actually uh, ovwrestling.com i believe and mm-hmm. it's it's got a ton of episodes on there that you can stream from blip i know what i'm doing at work yeah so i mean if you if you really are like you know, if you if you are wont to see some uh, Ohio Valley wrestling, then you can do it. Actually, looking on, let me. Yeah, see, it does say there are actually 619 episodes. Wow. So. Wow. They, um, they've been doing it for a long time. So. I, I just have one question, and it's just because I want to say this quote. Uh, what's Cliff Compton's biography quote? I don't know. I don't remember. It's uh, the media runs the world, and I run the media. So therefore, I run the world. That's P. P equals Q. <laughs> if P, then Q. <laughs> this Deduction. guy. This guy's good at uh, logic. He learned that in grade school. He so, of course didn't learn uh, about I, politics. I have a question but... for you. Um, has any of the wrestlers ever sliced their finger off in a deli? Um, I was going to ask. No, a but Mickey question. Rourke did, and I really <laughs> like that Fuck movie. You. I was so. going to ask a wrestler question. <laughs> um, Sorry. If you haven't seen The Wrestler, uh, maybe you should probably watch that before you go watch Ohio Valley Wrestling. Because that movie is good, and Ohio Valley Wrestling is also good. Okay. Um, (laughs) Oh, yeah, I also want to mention that looking through the women, I've seen, like, multiple ones that were declared champion. And there's only, like, ten women that wrestle for them, if that. So I think that probably they, they just can't get any women who want to wrestle for them. And so... They change the belts easy. like all the time, so I think every woman who wrestles is going to eventually be the champion of, at some point. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you're a woman who wants to wrestle, you should go for it because you could probably be the champion within like weeks. Apparently, yeah, first your match. first match, first televised match, and you became champion. So it's got to got to have good odds. Right. I think we're done with the Ohio Valley wrestling. Oh, I'm yes. very done. You got to find something. Uh, who are you picking for next week? Uh, well. To do next week's, I think it was it would either be you or him, right? Because I think you went before yeah. me. Um, I guess make it him because I'm going to do this stuff on the. Oh, here. that's right. You're going to do yeah. yeah, sure. So you're going to you're going to learn. He's pointing and, to me, Alex. Alex, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah, him. Well, I would announce that I have you. Been, I've been looking and I haven't found anything yet, but I'm going to keep looking and all. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on, we got some oh god, shut up about the Bill of Rights. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Okay, so you know. 
it's the Fourth of July. Uh, well, tomorrow will be as at the time of this recording. And you know, with Fourth of July, you hear a lot about how awesome our country is. You know, people eating Fuck hot yeah. dogs. It's uh, all true. <laughs> uh, we like pretty explosives, which I know Alex is super yeah. excited about. Uh, we drink, which goes well with the explosives. You know, I, I like Fourth of July. I do. I think it's fun, um, mainly because I get the day off. But uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, it could be, it could be it's Hitler's birthday. I'll be like, let's stay off, man. I yeah. don't know. I just I'm gonna take it. But uh, but I thought that looking, I don't think that's nationally recognized. No, it's not. Yeah, it is 420, man. <laughs> 420. <laughs> no, let's not get on. <laughs> but I thought that looking uh, at the anniversary of this country, it's interesting to see how our foundations or beliefs um, kind of stand up today. So I decided that we'd look at the Bill of Rights or the first 10 amendments and uh, see how they're holding up today. Are so, we going to go down them in order? Um, not well. really. It's going to kind of bounce around. But I'm going to start with the first, the first amendment, which uh, is Congress shall make no law respecting a an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech so or the or of the press or the rights or of people to peacefully, peacefully assemble assemble. petition the government regards the yes. graces say the whole thing come on yeah whatever <laughs> we got we got time we, we we can cut things but anyways uh basically i wanted to give counterpoints to the amendments and how they're being threatened um my first one is jim risen uh basically this guy wrote a book about the cia and about how they basically lied a whole fucking bunch to get into the Iraq war. Yeah. And his main, his main, uh, interviewer or the person that leaked all this information to him was a CIA person by the name of Sterling. And, uh, this obviously pissed off the, uh, first the Bush administration and now the Obama administration is actually more mad for some reason, even though, you know, it's, it happened eight years ago. Um, but basically what they're doing is they're trying to subpoena Ryson to court to talk about the operative, which um, the under the Aspian, what's that? The oh, on the leak, yeah. yeah. So they, they want to get information on Sterling so that they can put him in prison. So um, that, that's just one. Um, so how does that have anything to do with the First Amendment? Well, the First Amendment, they added a, uh, they amended the amendment almost with the Espionage Act. And uh, what that was supposed to do is it was supposed to protect individuals when there was a leak of any sort um, from illegality if it shows that the U.S. performed an illegal act. Mm. Uh, Sterling obviously had information that was showing the CIA had performed illegal acts. So therefore, Ryzen and Sterling should be given immunity from grand jury testimony or, or okay. court. So, um, so that's that one. Um, but the bigger example I wanted to give is Bradley Manning, which is kind of a hot button issue Bradley Manning um, he's basically the guy who's uh, considered responsible for the WikiLeaks cables and also some of the footage that has been leaked showing um, us gunning down civilians yes kind of botched operations Um, now when you review the cables I've done it personally there are numerous legal acts in these cables yeah Um, one example is the State Department spying on foreign diplomats mm-hmm. clearly illegal there's no doubt they say it in clear writing it's not there's nothing to interpret um another is of a video of a helicopter gunning down civilians this is also illegal so you know this guy he he should be protected right from mm-hmm. his first for first amendment, i think your right? bigger issue here is not with the first amendment but the espionage act right but that's an extension of the not really free- also, you're talking about the guy who leaked the WikiLeaks cables. This is part of the exclusion rule of the Fourth Amendment. No, that's not true. Uh, let me read it here. Hold on. I actually did some research on this. Uh, limitations. It's going to battle you. Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, if you don't know anything about the U.S. Constitution, let me read it right here. The Fourth Amendment is the right of the people to be secure in the persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search or seizures shall not be violated. So it's basically the search and uh, the unreasonable search and seizure clause. Well, I was going to get into that later. Um, Limitations of the Fourth Amendment here, according to Wikipedia, include... I remember reading this, but I can't find it right now. Sorry, you keep talking. I'll find it for you. Anyways, um, so you think the media and Congress would be like, oh, well, this guy obviously had the, the right to 
you know, leak this information, even though it was confidential because it showed illegal acts, right? Well, uh, let's see what U.S. Representative Mike Rogers has to say about it. Uh, sorry. This is number one, right? Yeah, they are number one. Accused of leaking classified military information is at Quantico, which always sounds cool. The investigation into Private Manning's alleged <laughs> leaking of tens of thousands of top secret documents has led one member of Congress to say he'd support capital punishment of Private Manning. Congressman Rogers is a member of the Select Intelligence Committee and is a former FBI special agent. Okay, so this guy it used to be in the FBI. Mm-hmm. So um, he thinks that this guy should be killed. And actually, that actually matches what the Obama administration thinks. Oh, it's it's technic- capital. It, it, in a way, it, it goes against because he was a member of the military. Releasing stuff that would harm the government is considered treason in the military. Yes, but if it's showing illegal acts, which it shows all over the place, then he should be immunized. Just like, uh, what was so the it has, has nothing from- to do with the First Amendment, then. Yeah, it does. It's free. It's free press, and free speech. Because one uh, the speech that he obtained doing- illegally. <clears throat> no. Because that he stole it from the government. He he did steal it from the government. Also, That's, I found it right here uh, about the Fourth Amendment. They found uh, in August 2008, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court reviews ruled that the President Congress had the authority to wiretap international phone cards and intercept illegal email messages without specific court order. So there you go, spying on foreign diplomats are allowed. N- no, it's <laughs> not though, because that is, that's a U.S. law. So internationally, they're still not allowed to do it. As long as it's on the United States. Again, they that's they've dis- they dis- they dismantled the Fourth Amendment. They have made it weak. That's what they've oh, yeah. done. Oh so yes, I agree with you there. Yeah, that's my whole point. That's the point I'm making. The First Amendment. They added the Espionage Act to strengthen. Well, the point, and the, then they weakened it again. Is the point you're making that how as the amendments were originally intended to be interpreted, they're not? They're not anymore. Or they're being amended. Right. They're being killed. Well, I definitely agree with that. Well, but I'll just go through the list here of the other things. Well, actually. Uh, before I start, there's a second clip of, of Rogers talking why he thinks that uh, that uh, Bradley Manning should be, you know. But he's yeah, not charged uh, with that. leaks primarily. But he's not charged with uh, that. Well, uh, he, he, uh, well, my argument is that there, it, through the course of the investigation, uh, and as I have said publicly, that he should be charged with treason. So what's funny is, if you notice, he goes, he should be killed because of the WikiLeaks cables. But that's not what he's charged with because they don't have any evidence. Right. He's actually charged for the helicopter video, and he just completely took actually, his shit on his own. Actually, there's plenty of evidence to say that he took that stuff. His logins are all over the place. When well, he yes, it. but that's not what he's charged with. So he doesn't even know what the court case is. So I'm just saying that he just wants the guy dead. So, um, anyways, there's there's a few other amendments that just from Bradley Manning you could you could just nix nix off pretty easily. Fifth Amendment: No person shall be held. To answer for a capital or otherwise inf- infamous crime, unless the on a per- presentment or indictment of a grand jury, he he was held for eight months without any charges given to him. He was basically just. Done. Well, that actually falls under the cruel and unusual punishment laws of the seventh that, and eighth amendment. That's also charges. those are also on my list. Um, that's the eighth amendment. Yeah, the eighth amendment: excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel or unusual pun- punishments inflicted. He's been held in a cell naked 23 hours a day. He gets one hour outside the cell to walk in circles in another cell. That's what he does every day. Yes, that is cruel and unusual. Yeah, I would think that is. Uh, And also there's many groups. uh, 250 legal scholars have condemned and come together and said that that should be illegal. Um, Also, the uh, Sixth Amendment, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy... The right of a speedy and public trial while well, he's been held for eight months. Well, also, you, he may not even get a trial. I don't understand why you're choking using Bradley, Bradley Manning as the subject of this conversation. You could say anyone. Well, I, I was going to say that yeah. too. This was done as other enemy combatants. Yeah, that's the whole, but that's the whole issue, though. I mean, a lot of these people, the idea of the Amendment of the Constitution, the Sixth Amendment, was supposed to apply to citizens of the United States. Well, a Bradley lot of Manning these people, is, Bradley Manning is, you're right, but the Guantanamo Bay people are not technically citizens. Yeah, a so, lot of them aren't. The overseas nationals that were captured. Yeah. The ones that are citizens of the United States, there's a strong legal defense to say that the Sixth Amendment should apply and these people should be released. The people overseas that are getting captured for doing terrorist stuff, it's a thin line to say that they're enemy combatants because it, it really depends on what you consider an act of war. Yeah. But, but we've yeah. declared terrorism. That's why I picked Bradley Manning for yeah, that one that's specifically because okay. he is a U.S. citizen. Um, but uh, the the... 
other one, I'm going to get off Bradley Manning. Um, the Fourth Amendment, even though I could have made the argument for Fourth Amendment, like I yeah. said, I like this one better. Um, there was a court case recently in Indiana where, um, and I tried to get a video clip, but there wasn't any, probably because they don't want this on, on the news, I guess, uh, prohibits any federal or civil action against any person providing surveillance against, uh, or surveillance assistance to an IC, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I read my wrong quote. Um, Justice Stephen David, uh, he, he is a uh, federal circuit judge mm -hmm. in Indiana. He voted that uh, the court said if a police officer wants to enter a home for any reason or no reason at all, a homeowner cannot do anything to block the officer's entry. Yeah. So, so that's the whole Fourth Amendment. Basically, they're just saying... Well, what's the background of this case? Because it's more than just that. Basically, they suspected somebody of housing, I think, drugs. Uh, I, wasn't this the one where there was a domestic disturbance against his wife? The guy said that there was no problem. They went inside the house, and the cops thought that the domestic disturbances were still continuing inside the house. I'm pretty sure that's the thing you're thinking of. It, it could be. You should do some research. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it didn't go over it, that in the news Was it story. unreasonable or not? I mean... No, it, it's it's inherently unreasonable. You need to have a warrant. If to it's go the one that I am thinking place, of, no the cop what. had reasonable suspicion that a crime, basically assault and battery, was going down. He entered the house. The guy prevented the man from entering the house, which was basically an obstruction of justice. Okay. So that's why he was arrested. I'm not sure if that's the case that you're quoting, but if that's the one I'm thinking of, then it's reasonable. I don't. Never mind. I'm <laughs> I'm not even talking during this. Yeah. I'm done. Well, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is actually um, there was there's a Time Magazine article out that came out this week, and I didn't even know this was coming out, that talks about uh, the Constitution, the title of it's Does It Still Matter? And uh, this got me psyched because I thought, oh, this should defend a lot of my arguments. Well, I found this clip of uh, some managing editor of Time doing an interview with uh, Greenspan's bitch, Andrea Mitchell. Three. Yeah, three. In its new cover story, the Constitution, does it still matter? Managing editor Richard Stengel joins us now. Rick, of course the answer is yes, the Constitution <laughs> matters. Yes. But tell us why you think that it is relevant. So, so of course, it does matter, right? That's, so we're, we're, let's, learn, yeah. let's, learn, let's learn why it matters. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the managing editor of time. His explanation. The Constitution is a general guardrail so we don't go off the road. It's not uh, something that steers us down the center of the road all of the time. So between the originalists <laughs> who interpret the Constitution as exactly as the framers, they think the framers intended, versus those people who look at the Constitution as, as, as larger principles that have to apply, be applied to the reality right now. Now, I don't know if he meant to do this, but he, he takes the first people's argument, which is the literal the people who literally take the Constitution. Yeah. And he goes, what they think, the, he instantly uh, demeans that whole side of the argument because he's like, basically the whole argument is the Founding Fathers wouldn't know. So that... Right. And that's why he says they think. Well, that sounds like a religious argument. That's like people saying that this is how they interpret the Bible. This is yeah. how they interpret the well, Bible. Well, it is a big issue because a lot of the wording in the Constitution is ambiguous, and it's been the job of the Supreme Court justices over the years to right. try to figure out whether it's A, less literal, or B, more of an intense sort of thing. I mean, look at the Second Amendment for any argument of that. People you know, argue over the right and bear and arms. Mm -hmm. the, like the definitions of the single words, yeah. they argue yeah. over this. And this has been a constant problem since you know, the Constitution was written 200 years ago. Yeah, and th this, um, so yeah, this guy, he's, he's actually more talking less about the Constitution and extensions of the Constitution, like the War Powers Act. Um, so this is the, the last clip. This is his opinion on the War Powers Act. I mean, it's hard to know what George Washington, to use your example, would say about a drone going over Libya. There are plenty of people who legitimately question whether, for example, the War Powers Act is constitutional or not. I mean, the, the, the Constitution actually has, has dueling equities there because it says that the president is commander in chief and it says that Congress must de declare war. Okay, so this, is, this was my favorite part of the whole thing because... At first, you're thinking, oh, he's going to say the War Powers Act is illegal because, um, you know, the president shouldn't be able to 
you know, start a war without congressional approval. What he's actually saying is that the War Powers Act is not needed because the commander in chief just can choose whatever he wants. That's what he's saying because he's saying that there's two caveats to the argument where you could either have uh, just the commander in chief choose or Congress declares an act of war, which I think that one's a lot more explicitly stated than someone just saying, oh, he's commander in chief. Well, to be fair, the War Power Act has nothing to do with the Constitution. It's been broken numerous times. Right. But so there's no point, really. The problem is that there's only one person who can help us with this problem. And, and you know, maybe, maybe he has an answer. Give me some ideas. Hey, don't look at me. I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, God damn it. The only thing I learned doing all this is that... Um, the Bill of Rights only matters if it helps the executive branch. That's it. That's what I learned. If, well, if it gives more power to the executive branch, then that's how it should be. There are hundreds of problems inherent in this, and I'm not going to go into them because now that the segments have run super long, we only have 15 minutes left. But the fact is that not only have definitions of words themselves changed in the past 200 years to the point that it's almost impossible to interpret it exactly as it was written anyway, um, the Bill of Rights, there's no way that it'll apply to everyone because it was written in a time where not everyone was considered equal. Right. And so for, for us to go today and act like it's supposed to be word for word, uh, I, think it, I think really it should be. But the fact is, it doesn't matter because the laws have dictated that the Constitution isn't really valid anymore because we've, we've created so many amendments and bullshit addendums to everything that we've changed the definitions of every single member of the Bill of Rights and, and well, far beyond that. State laws also changed so many things where some they, of the Bill of Rights have different levels exactly. completely of other states. No, and there's, there's something called the 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment is? The one that, well, let me read it for you here. Oh my God, <laughs> never mind. I don't even care. Basically any laws that are uh, not specifically stated... Oh, shit, I forgot the exact wording for it. It makes it so the Bill of Rights and anything in the Constitution applies also to the state laws. Oh, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're all applied. There's some have very little of it and some have way more of it. I, well, it's supposed to, but the problem is that states also act very lax on certain things when, uh, yeah. even when it's dictated by federal law to do something, well, it's, it's the, the same, states will go against it. Yeah, it's just whatever benefits the state. Yeah, and, and that's how it will always I'm, be. I am not a constitutionalist. I think there's a lot of problems with the Constitution. Hell, there's problems in the Bill of Rights, but I think it's better than how we interpret it or how our executive branch interprets it The executive now, branch doesn't say, interpret it. It's the judicial branch that interprets it. That is not true. I disagree. It, we don't have time regime. for this. I mean, that whole thing is, is we don't have time for executive this. branch driven. If you guys want to send us a voicemail about this, please do. But we don't have time to discuss this anymore. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, it's uh, top three movies. All right, top three movies of the week. Adam Sandler is like in love with some girl, but then it turns out that the girl is actually a golden retriever or something. No, perfect. We'll call it puppy love. So this is where we pick the movies that we think will make the most money for July 8th. What are our choices this so, week? So, no, well, first we're going to talk about what movies made the most money last week. <laughs> Transformers made $97 million. Yay, fuck that movie. Cars 2 made $25 million at, at number two. And Bad Teacher made $14 million at number three. So everyone got them all right. Yay. Go and figure. Think, Good and, job. But also, we didn't know Larry Crown was coming out. And yeah, I, that was supposed to make more money than... I forgot to put that in, so yeah. But whatever. So then uh, me and Benson are at 18 and 6 overall. Ryan's at 17 and 7, and Mike's at 14 and 9. So the movies coming out this week are Zookeeper Duh. and Horrible Bosses. The only notable ones that I saw. And the ones we had last week were still Transformers and... Uh, Cars 2, Bad Teacher. Cars 2. So I've already picked mine. So you guys yeah. already wrote yours down or something. I don't know. Um, is there another pen? Zookeeper. Write them down your... Uh, horrible Bosses. Yeah, write them down your... Laptop or something, I don't know. Or just don't lie about it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that Zookeeper movie with Kevin James. Who's going to see that? Who's going to see TGI Zooper Friday Keeper fuck shit a lot you of know, people? The, fuck. The, funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing about Kevin James is he makes movies that have first name, last name, adjective, job name. So like Paul Bart Mall Cop, we have Griffin Key Zookeeper. 
And by the way, I have a uh, I have a theory about Paul Blart Mall Cop that those are the funniest four words in any order that you can put them in, like yeah. Blart Cop Mall Paul. It's still funny, <laughs> Cop Mall Blart Paul. All right, yeah. so uh, <laughs> yeah, give me your paper. No, sorry. All right, so, well, I'll tell you what I said because mine's written on my computer, but I said Zookeeper, Transformers, Horrible Bosses. That's what I think. Okay, that's the exact same thing I said. Ryan said Transformers, Zookeeper. I'm not giving Kevin James top billing. Fuck him. <laughs> Cars 2, is that Cars what Cars 2. That's okay. A, yeah. It looks like Call. Yeah, it looks like Call. But, uh, yeah. And then Mike said Transformers, Zookeeper, Horrible Bosses. Yeah, I still think Transformers is going to make $50 million next week. Also, the horrible bosses movie is a bunch of people go around and they're planning on killing their bosses. So I think Transformers will make a lot, but I think that Zookeeper will make more because I, I can't in good conscience because sadly, all of his movies that are wacky I think always start big. And and here's here's the other thing: Transformers Three has an A cinema score. People are fucking loving that movie, even though critics fucking hate it. I don't understand, but they. People welcome walk out of the movie and they're saying that's, this yeah, movie that's is a welcome to Michael that's Bay. That's every Michael Bay movie, yeah. just about except for the Dude, second one. Second one, one. Dude, the yeah, fucking... but, uh, think about all his other movies though. Yeah, Pearl the Harbor. second one. Here, here's the thing Pearl about Harbor. the second one though: he largely penned the second one because yeah. of the writers' strike, mm-hmm. and so yeah. I mean, hint, this one's just as convoluted though. You know, I've heard things like that, but I've I've never heard someone. I've heard a bunch of people say that it's a piece of shit and they hate it, but. I've never heard anyone say it's worse than the second one. No, and almost and almost that. everyone has said it's better. Even even the ones who hated it said it was better than the second one usually. Right. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's good. It's not, but all right. So TGI Zookeeper. Oh. <laughs> Two See, TGI Friday of, ads in the trailer. Yeah, we mm-hmm. saw the trailer for that. We oh. watched what was it X Men or something like that. I don't know something. And well, first off, yeah, the two TGI Friday things were terrible. But I think the worst part of that trailer was the fact. That, like, the gorilla that they had, because he's a zookeeper, obviously, he's a gorilla, was, like, a blatant stereotype of a black person. Well, It was just awful. I I think beyond that, uh, I didn't really pick up on that, actually. Also, Kevin James. Well, Kevin James is terrible. I I just, honestly, what I was saying to you guys earlier is just that seeing that trailer, that movie just looked like the most cliche piece of shit. You already know exactly what's going to happen in the plot. It's Doctor Doolittle. That's all that I movie is. I thought it was is. more uh, same it was a Night at the Museum kind of. Yeah, yeah, it sort of felt yeah, like that. yeah. It, it feels yeah, like a mix. I, between I was Kevin those. James Night at the Museum hot chicks with too. animals instead. I was. He always have hot chicks in all the movies. Because it it's makes the movies make more money. No. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's it. That's the only reason. Uh, all right. Okay. So, top I think five. We're getting out to the top five now. Uh, number five. Finally. People picking up thumb drives in parking lots. You can throw yeah, so, yeah, about so um, there was this government study about uh, basically penetration testing for security at a company, a uh, government, sorry, a government office. Uh, this company that was doing the testing dropped a bunch of USB thumb drives in the parking lot, just on the ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, they found... And CDs as well. Yeah, and, and CDs as well. They found that uh, I think it was 60% of mm-hmm. the people that picked them up, put them in their computer and turned them on. And uh, No, sorry, it was 90% of the people that picked them up, turned no. them, put them in the computer. no. It was the other way around. Sixty percent okay. put them in the computer. Ninety percent of the people who did put them in the computer actually installed the software on it or opened the files. <laughs> that, that's incredible. And yeah. these were government employees. These, were these government weren't employees. just random people. Yeah. So like, I can understand putting it in your computer because you may want to see McDonald's who the files TX. are or stuff yeah. like that. But <laughs> installing the that. software that auto runs yeah. when you install it—that's like the biggest. That's dumb. No, no. Yeah, Free well, that's, software. that's, like, opening, that's yeah. like opening email attachments from random characters at People hotmail.com. do that all the time. Yeah, that's the same thing. We but these are government employees, yeah. so we're just going to go on to the next one. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's the NSA that I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they were NSA, but... Uh, <laughs> Number four, women complain about the uh, go-to-fuck-to-sleep audiobook. Oh. Yes, uh, I found this on CNN uh, opinion section, which may be the funniest... Uh, website you can go to because every opinion on there is stupid. Yes. Um, but uh, this woman was complaining about uh, God. I wish I knew her name. I don't have it written here though. She was complaining about uh, the "Go the Fuck to Sleep" bedtime story book. That's like a joke about how children never go to bed. Yeah. And they won't. They won't. They, you know, it's a parent saying like "Go the fuck to sleep," and it was. It, it was kind of popular, and, and it was it was narrated uh, as an audio book by Samuel L. Jackson, and. You know, it became kind of popular, and she has, her point is like, some children don't have parents, and so we shouldn't trivialize their problems by making this book, 
which has absolutely nothing to do with that at all. I'm anyway. pretty sure that book is written for the adults. Also, it she, is. She, <laughs> exactly. That's the point. She, like she often uses the word violent profanity the entire yeah, time. Yeah, she calls it violent profanity, even though there's not one instance in the book where the person says they're going to hurt their child in any way at all. It's it's completely ridiculous. By the way, the name is uh, Karen Spears Zacharias. That's it. That's what it is. Yeah, Zacharias. There was Zacharias. a there was a quote in there too, where it's like she quoted some guy that said something about the book where um it was um what if this book wasn't about kids? What if it was about a certain race like black people? Then people would hate this book and call it racist. I'm like, so yeah, what, but what? it's not. Yeah. I know what the fuck. The it's, joke, it's, it's, the whole joke is supposed to be the children never go to sleep and the parents are getting you know exacerbated trying to do this. Yeah, it has nothing. No, 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 that there's there's nothing else to discuss about this. Just you know, go go look up. We'll we'll have it in the show notes. Fuck this woman. She is she's she's one of those people that is trying to pussify all of America and turn us all into fucking pathetic people that have to be PC all the time and can't say what you think ever because it might offend somebody. I don't do anything unless it's fun. Yeah, Catholic radio. <laughs> <laughs> those are two bumper stickers we saw in a car. Same car. Yeah, don't do anything unless it's fun. Then Catholic radio okay. ad. <laughs> Screw that. Number three, um, the mayor from Georgia who wants immigration reform. Okay, so this, this mayor, um, basically he is going, you know, uh, well, Georgia created a law that said that if you hire illegal immigrants, uh, it's a criminal act, basically. Yeah, day workers and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, this guy is a mayor of, of a small town. It's like 600 people. Um, he's like, you know, I, I used to hate those Mexicans, but, uh, I learned that, uh, they're actually good people. You know, they're, they're pretty good people. I like them a lot. Well, you find out that the guy runs a farm. Yeah. So really the reason why he doesn't want this law is because, and he even kind of admits it, is because he wants to exploit them. Well, I disagree. I don't think he admits it at any point in the article. No, he does but... say that he, they are the, the laborers he needs. Well, uh, does, he says that in those words. He says basically he needs those laborers. I, I know he says that they are better laborers, and you know what the fact is they, they are. are They're 100% they no better than American-born laborers. They're way better. You're but saying Americans are lazy? I, are I actually, I, I have, I don't disagree with you on this. I think he probably is motivated by that, but the article... The way he talks about it, it is in such a way where he implies that he is friends with a lot of immigrants after getting to know them. And so I don't know if he's full of shit completely or if he is. Like, I, I can't tell. But um, I'd like to hear people's opinions. So if anyone actually reads that article. If any of you own us, a farm, send us a voicemail. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who has day laborers. Please I don't think I have too many farm owners listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> They're working. So uh, number two, Newsweek's cover. Well, Princess Diana. <laughs> this is fantastic. Probably my favorite. So, um, they had an article on Newsweek for Fourth of July. Obviously, you know, uh, it's American Independence Day. So, um, talk about British people. It's Princess Diana would have turned fifty if she hadn't died in a car crash. And uh, so they did a very you know pertinent, relevant story, which is what if Princess Diana was alive now? What would she be doing? Basically, yeah. which is a complete. Bullshit piece. That's like saying, what if Abraham Lincoln well, suddenly rose from the dead and lived another 50 years? Well, this is, yeah. this yeah, is important vampires, because some of the, the best-selling issues that Marvel ever had were the what-if issues. Yes, so, which you said. And yeah. that's totally, I bet you people fucking bought the shit out of this yeah. thing. But The best thing is there's a Photoshop on the front Well, covers. that's what it is. It's yeah. not about the art. It's about the Photoshop. Yeah. Because the Photoshop is a picture of Kate Middleton walking alongside princess diana and it looks as if they're having a conversation and it's it's obviously Aww. shopped fairly badly but the it's the, really bad oh it's not as bad as you're saying it's just not good but the the problem with it is that that's completely retarded and yeah. insane and kind of I, I you know i'm i Disturbing. don't give a shit yeah i don't give a shit about princess diana like i i, I can't stand when these people make a big There's deal no about British her royalty because she did nothing and i stand by that completely yeah. but half. yeah <laughs> gotta stop those landmines but uh she she did almost nothing but the fact is that it's still kind of offensive to her family to be like hey what if she was alive these guys yeah, would be if, friends I it's like, that. what if you were the family you read it's like what the fuck i would be i would be pretty Fuckers. pissed I, I i gotta say how many british men hell british men and women do you think masturbated to this cover <laughs> To the oh. cover? To the cover. The Newsweek cover. I don't think any. More, more than a dozen. I think there. I don't think any. 
I don't Dude, they love their royalty. They got Oh, royalty. they love them, but I don't think that they're sexually obsessed with Princess Diana. I think that they're they're sexually culturally Kate Middleton now. Well, yeah, well, Kate Middleton's pretty hot, but yeah. just saying. But uh Princess Diana is uh she's they're culturally and socially obsessed with her. They consider her to be almost like the de facto like perfect queen, like would have been like the greatest person of all time. They fucking love her. They just love her. That often happens in politics. The people that die end up being the perfect politicians. John F. Kennedy Jr. Never <laughs> yeah, they and never end yeah. up screwing up their reputation. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, okay. Tupac. <laughs> Tupac. Tupac. Oh, yeah, by the way, Tupac would be really, up, shit. really fast story. I was in the grocery store waiting to uh, it check Tupac? out. No, it's about my <laughs> girlfriend care. actually, <laughs> um, but God. it's funnier. My I was girlfriend. in. I was waiting to check out in the uh, grocery store, and there was a. It, it wasn't the it wasn't that one, but it was another one that said Diana at fifty, and yeah. she looked at it and she goes, "She's 50? Oh. and the the cashier Did, started laughing at her, and I was like, "Yes, her skeleton is fifty, <laughs> and the cashier laughed even harder, and she felt completely awful, but you should problem. because I was like, "Dude, seriously." Whatever. You know, honestly, I would think she's alive because she's on the fucking paper still. <laughs> still. Oh, it's depressing. But anyway, let's go on. <laughs> Number one, people who hurt themselves with fireworks. Yeah, fuck all of you. This is this is the reason why fireworks are illegal, why I can't buy bottle rockets I think the reason fireworks are illegal here is because the desert would just burst into flames. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, no, that's no, the... No. That, that's... Okay, if you throw a bottle rocket right into a dry bush, it's not going to light anything on fire. Nothing's gonna happen. Put firecrackers. Nothing's gonna happen. Disagree completely. <laughs> I, I, I say all the users should go do this. Put I got some. I got some in my in my room right now. We'll go do it afterwards. Shh. I'll show you. Our partner. Stop implicating me. <laughs> um, no, you know I, I agree though because not not with that. I don't agree with that. They can start fires. I I do think mm-hmm. that they probably can and have started fires yeah. in the past. Well, but the thing is though, it's the people who like the, light them off while holding them in their hands. Well, it is no. It more well, so. It's me. more so. It more <laughs> exactly. So, no, it's not them. It is the people who light them off in a dry bush like a fucking idiot and ruin it for everyone else. Those are the people I hate. I don't hate people who light fireworks off. Fireworks are fucking fun. I gotta say. There, there was a great point put in last week about reckless driving. You said higher speed limits. And what he said is people who are better drivers tend to drive more recklessly because they're cocky little shits. It's, it's the true. same with fireworks. When people are good with fireworks, what do they do? They shoot them at each other. That's not real smart. You know, they, and you said this. I was like, yeah, like those people that shoot them at each other. He's like, oh, well, I love shooting them at each other. Yeah. <laughs> I... I completely disagree with the, fa- with the whole well, basis I, I'm of sorry, your statement, the, though. No, because I don't know anyone... Who I consider a really good driver who's been in a serious crash ever. I, Not I could name tons. So, okay, back to, fire, back to fireworks. Yeah, Michael Schumacher okay. had dozens of crashes. Back to fireworks. <laughs> yeah, you, ain't, you ain't rumbling candles at people. It doesn't fucking hurt them. I'm talking about people, people by like M500s and M1000s and they just do stupid shit with that. You're going to fucking hurt yourself. You think, an, you think an M80 is big? That's nothing compared to no, those. No, it's not. That's People blowing off M80s in their ass or something? Okay. <laughs> you fucking ruined it for everyone. Thanks, jackass. Fucking idiots. <laughs> Roman King. He just, you gotta he know just the wants limits. his fireworks. Yeah. That's all he wants. You get him That's by. fine. I like fireworks. I just... I think it's funny when people go... Oh, well, it, these people are stupid with fireworks, but then I see people do retarded shit with fireworks all the time. I hear I, I, just people do dumb shit with Yeah, but with you're fireworks. scared when I spin scissors with my hand, which is nothing, so. Yes, I, I am scared of that. <laughs> I'm cautious. Okay, that's going to wrap up yeah, this. Yeah, cautious. So. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Um, again, if you want to leave us any messages about anything we said and tell us we're wrong, it's a podcast at tippy40s.com or 218 666 8407. Um, yeah, see you next week. Bye. Bye. See ya.